Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the electron and nuclear physics. So this is sixth year stuff and it tends to, sixth year stuff tends to have a bigger focus on the leave insert physics course. You can expect probably about a question and a half on these two topics. Um, they tend to be rather repetitive and it is worthwhile knowing this topic. Um, so we're just going to run through some of the stuff. So the first thing to say is a lot of the maths that's involved here involves energy being changed from one form to another. So the first thing to just kind of say as a side note before we get into some of the maths is you need to be very familiar with changing from the two different units of energy, which is electron volts and joules. So one electron volt is equal to 1.6 blah, 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 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. You get that from your log tables from page 46. So changing from electron volts to joules, just multiply by this number. Changing from joules to electron volts, divide by that number. Okay, so first thing we're going to look at is the maths involved with cathode rays. Um, in their tubed cathode ray tubes and in x-ray machines. So up here I have an x-ray machine and it's literally how we make x-rays. So we've got a cathode here from which electrons are emitted. They are then accelerated across here, hit off this target and then photons of x-rays are produced. So the energy transfers that are going on, the electrons which are emitted here originally have electric potential energy. That potential energy then is changed to kinetic energy. And then that kinetic energy is then changed to wave energy. So all the maths will be involving those energy transfers. So first things first, um, you've got from the cathode to moving across. So again, that's electric potential energy. Potential energy into kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy we know at this stage is just in the log table, so it's half mv squared. Um, the potential energy, I've explained this before, but it comes from Potential difference is the work done or the energy required to remove one coulomb from one place to move one coulomb from one place to another. So rearranging that potential energy is equal to VQ. QV is we normally write it. Okay, so QV is equal to a half mv squared. So a lot of the time the maths involved here. It will say calculate the maximum potential or calculate the maximum kinetic energy um, in a X-ray tube with a potential difference of 200 volts. And you literally just sub it all in. This Q here is the charge on an electron. OK, because it's electrons we're talking about here. So it's the charge of an electron. OK, um, then. You can go further and you can say that that kinetic energy, half mv squared, or if you've just worked out kinetic energy, you could just leave it as kinetic energy, is equal to wave energy, which is hf, plus quite a lot of heat, but it tends to be ignored in the calculations. Okay, so again, that's the kinetic energy changing to wave energy. Okay, so years where this has come up that you might want to try now for me is 2019, question eight, the end part of the question, 2015, question seven, and 2017, question 10, the first half. As with lots of the areas in physics, the best thing to do is literally learn this off as if it were a definition. You've got to learn off the steps and what to do. So you know these are the energy transfers and you literally just do your maths. Okay, so next thing we're going to talk about is the photoelectric effect. 
Okay, so the photoelectric effect says that when light of a suitable frequency falls on a metal, electrons can be emitted from the surface of that metal. Um, this is an equation, it's Einstein's law, which kind of describes what's actually happening. Now, it's very common that you were asked to explain Einstein's law. And I've seen this done before where people have wrote out this equation, which again can be found in your log tables. And they've literally said what each of these mean. But it's not enough just to say what the symbols mean. You have to actually describe what's happening. So um, light travels in the form of a photon. And when it hits off a metal, all the energy from the photon is given to one electron. If that energy is over the work function, the electron has enough energy to break free and the extra energy appears as kinetic energy. So things to say here. A lot of the time they might tell you the wavelength of the light. You need to use the fact that if it is an electromagnetic wave, you know that it travels at 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. And you use the formula speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. 3 by 10 to the 8 is equal to the frequency you're trying to find by the wavelength you've been given. And then you can sub it back in. That also can come up up here in some of these questions. So like say here, you might not be told the frequency, but you'll be told the wavelength and you can work from there. Okay, um, this is the work function. Again, often given in electron volts, converted into joules before you start. And you find that by Planck's constant by the threshold frequency there. And then this, again, if they just ask you for the kinetic energy, don't have it in this form. Just leave it as this. The only reason you would need to put it in this form is the, if they asked you for the velocity of the electron. Okay, so the questions I'd like you to attempt are 2019, the rest of it, and 2018, 12D. Okay, so the next section that comes up is nuclear fission and fusion. Again, what's happening here is there will be a loss in mass and the reason why there's a loss in mass is that mass is converted into energy. So the maths involved in these actually is fairly simple, but it's just that you're using quite large numbers. Um, and a lot of the time we get calculation errors. So basically what you need to do is the, find the loss in mass. Once you've found it, you then sub in E is equal to mc squared. And this will tell you the amount of energy given off. Okay, so what often comes up in nuclear fission and fusion, as well as this um, simple maths here, is you're asked to kind of write out the equation for what's actually happening. So I'm going to use 2018 question 8 as an example of this if you want to have it open in front of you. Okay, so when you have the question open in front of you, you're told that uranium... 235 plus a neutron cause a reaction where you are getting um, barium 139 and on, 94 plus some amount, we don't know what number that is, of neutrons. Okay, so that's all been told from the question. You now need to fill in the extra pieces here. So this is the mass number of uranium. Um, this could change. There is different forms of uranium. They're called isotopes. Okay, so they have the same number of protons, same small number, but a different number of neutrons. So this number can change. In this question, it's 235, but the small number for uranium will always be the same. So you literally go to your periodic table to work out what that number would be. So in the back of your periodic table, you can see there's different forms of uranium, but all the time their small number will be 92. Neutrons always get mass number of one and a zero here. Barium, do the same. So lots of different bariums, but they're always 56. 
and so on. Okay, once you've filled all this in, what you should find is that the numbers above on this side equal the numbers above on this side, the numbers below on this side equal the numbers below on this side. So you can see on this side we have 2, 3, 6. On this side at the moment, the two of these equal 2, 3, 3. So then we need three more of these. So this number here is 3. Okay. Now, to find out the actual maths, as we said, we basically find out the mass before of this one plus this one plus the mass after of this one plus this one plus three neutrons. Now, a lot of the time in the question, so for example in 2018 that we're doing here, you'll be told at the bottom of the question their mass in atomic mass units, but you don't have to be told that. If you're not told it, you find it in the same place we were just looking in the log tables. So convert those atomic mass units into kg, add on the mass of your neutron, that's the mass before, take away the mass after, again, all converted from atomic mass units into kg, that will be your loss in mass, and sub into this. And if you can try the question we're just working on there, and this question, please. Okay, so the next thing we're looking at is radioactivity, and um, spontaneous decay of an unstable nuclei with the emission of one or more types of radiation, three types, alpha, beta, and gamma, are the three types of radiation. Okay, so just to remind ourselves of what these three actually are. Okay, so an alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. So it would have an atomic number of two and a mass number of two plus two, so four. And um, if you have a look at that, then helium also has the same. So it's actually represented, it's like a helium nucleus. So sometimes in equations, we represent it like this. Beta you can see here, beta is when a neutron in the nucleus changes into a proton and an electron. So because of this, the number of protons has gone up by one. So the atomic number has gone up by one um, of the new element. And the mass number has changed, the, has stayed the same because it's lost one neutron and it's gained one proton. And the beta particle itself is actually just the electron which is emitted or thrown out of the nucleus. So the beta particle is represented by an E minus one and zero. Okay, gamma is just energy. So again, talking through the new element will have a mass number of minus four and an atomic number of minus two for alpha decay. The new element will have a mass number which is the same because as I said lost one of these gained one of these and an atomic number plus one. And this one you don't really have to write out the equation because there is no change in elements. So let's just quickly do American 241. It's an example of something which undergoes alpha decay. So if it undergoes alpha decay, you know that it's going to produce a helium nucleus. Okay. And it's going to produce a new element with a mass number of minus four and an atomic number of minus two. So first we need to work out what this number is. You should at this stage know what to do. We go and we find it out. Okay, americum, again, it doesn't matter what mass number you have, because as long as it's americum, it will always have the same atomic number, so it's 95. Then we just sub in, so this is going to go down by 2, and this is going to go down by 4. You're then using, again, this number can always change, so you don't look at this, you look at this number to work out what element goes here. So, 93... That's Neptune. And that's your equation. So I might get you to also do, we'll do carbon 14. That's an example of something which undergoes beta decay. Now, note that I've put the zero up here because it doesn't really have a mass. Okay, so the minus one 
goes down here. The zero goes on the same side as the mass number. So again, I have looked at my periodic table to find out what the atomic number of carbon is. It's 12. Now, my new element will have a mass number, which is the same, and an atomic number, which has gone up by 1. So 12 plus 1, 13. I then look at this number to work out what my element here is. And that's element nitrogen. And again, to check you've got it right for both of these, this plus this plus this should equal, that plus that plus that should equal, this plus this plus this should equal, that plus that plus that should equal. Okay, so there's two questions. You're going to do the rest of 2017-12b in a minute, but they're the two for right now equations. Okay, so the maths in radioactivity involves two formulas. So half-life is equal to natural log of two over this thing. This is the decay constant. And activity is equal to decay constant by number of undecayed nuclei. Okay, so um, normally things have a really long half-life, so it's given in years. You need to convert it into seconds before you use this. Normally the questions will involve, let's say they ask you to find the activity, You'll be told this, you need to work out this from this formula here. So you normally use the two formulas together and it's very, very common. Um, the activity can be given lots of different names. So it could be the number of nuclei decaying per second, the rate of decay, um, the amount of radiation per second given off. All of those mean the same thing. It means this thing here. Okay, so again, they just always involve using the two of them. Even if you have to reread the question again and find that at the beginning of the question they might have told you the half-life, and you will use the two then. So this comes up all over the place. I'm going to give you a few. 2019 5H, 2018 12B, 2017 12B, 2009 12D. All the same idea. Okay, last thing that might come up is one that's not in your log tables. The fraction that is left is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of the number of half-lifes. Let's say there's been two half-lifes, then it would be 1 to the power of 2 squared, so there'd be a quarter left. Okay, and the last thing to mention, just because it's on the course, but it's extremely rare, is in this formula here, activity is equal to decay constant multiplied by the number of undecayed nuclei. You could be asked to convert the number of nuclei into grams or into moles. One mole is equal to 6.02 by 10 to the power of 23 nuclei. So you can use that to work out the number of grams and one mole is equal to its relative molecular mass in grams. For the moment, I'm actually going to leave that there. It's a tiny amount on the course and I will come back to it another stage, but just to mention it here. Right, so a lot in that, but again, definitely worth knowing. And there are steps that you can kind of learn off for each of these. So let me know if there's any bit that you think you're unsure of 